Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. First headline, Taproot, the biggest upgrade to Bitcoin in four years, is locked in as lightning doubles. Last Friday, Bitcoin's Taproot upgrade, the most significant protocol improvement in years, officially locked in after passing the speedy trial parameters, which required 90% of the blocks mined in a two-week window to signal support for the upgrade. The full implementation of Taproot, however, is still a ways off, as the next step in the activation process is a five-month waiting period. This dead period is designed to give miners and nodes the opportunity to upgrade their software to contain the logic for the Taproot soft fork. When Bitcoin reaches block number 7,000, when Bitcoin reaches block number 709,632, which is estimated to happen in November, Taproot will activate, allowing nodes to begin recognizing transactions made using Taproot. The integration of Taproot will be the first major upgrade to Bitcoin's code since 2017's segregated witness. Taproot hopes to improve Bitcoin's privacy, multi-sig wallets, security, and scaling. On a related note, Bitcoin's Lightning Network has continued to grow since April, when it hit 10,000 operating nodes for the first time, nearly doubling within a year. Though May and June were slow for the markets, according to Bitcoin Visuals and 1ML, over the past 30 days, Bitcoin's Layer 2 solution has seen growth in three major statistics. Number one, number of nodes grew by 5.25%, two, number of channels increased by 9.2%, and three, network capacity jumped by 15%. Zoom out even further, and the growth becomes even more substantial. As of June 11, 2020, there were only 5,916 nodes with channels, and the cumulative network capacity, which is the amount of BTC locked into Lightning channels, sat at 936 Bitcoin. According to CoinSquare's Kevin Rook, part of the excitement about a, around Lightning Network could stem from El Salvador. On Twitter, he pointed out, that two of the most popular finance apps in El Salvador are Lightning-enabled Bitcoin wallets. He tweeted, It's Lightning season. Lightning network capacity just broke 1,500 BTC. Networks, nodes, channels, and capacity are at all-time highs. Next headline. The crypto market may be down, but private investments continue flowing in. This week, three crypto companies alone announced over $350 million in funding. The largest raise totaled $230 million, with Peter Thiel leading a high-profile group of investors to back BitDAO, a decentralized autonomous organization designed to invest in DeFi projects. Bybit, an Asian cryptocurrency exchange, also got in on the project, pledging future shares that could amount to $1 billion a year. BitDAO token holders will be able to vote on which projects to invest in, and the DAO aims to employ hundreds of people in its R&D centers, according to the block. Bitwise also announced a significant raise, closing a Series B of $70 million led by Henry Kravis, the founder of private equity firm KKR, billionaire Stanley Druckenmiller, and Bridgewater CEO David McCormick, among others. According to CNBC, Bitwise recently became profitable after four years of business, when it hit $1.2 billion in assets under management at the end of the first quarter. Rounding out a big week in funding, DYDX, a decentralized derivatives exchange, secured $65 million in a Series C led by Paradigm after its January raise of $10 million. With a new influx of cash, Antonio Giuliano, the founder of DYDX, and also a previous guest on Unchained, expressed interest in decentralizing the protocol, telling the block, quote, our goal really is to get to a point where we're only publishing open source code and all of DYDX's run natively on the blockchain. Next headline. MicroStrategy's macro strategy is pretty simple. Bitcoin. Monday was a busy day for MicroStrategy, the software company turned corporate hodler. Early that morning, MicroStrategy announced the completion of its $500 million offering of secured notes, bringing in a total of $488 million after fees to purchase more Bitcoin. According to reports, the company received more than $1.5 billion worth of notes for the first time, more than tripling the original offering of $400 million. Hours after completing the debt offering, MicroStrategy also unveiled a plan to sell $1 billion worth of its stock, with the proceeds being used for, quote, general corporate purposes, including the acquisition of more Bitcoin. The software firm currently holds 92,000 Bitcoin on its balance sheet, worth roughly $3.7 billion. With the addition of $1.5 billion in potential capital available, MicroStrategy could afford over 35,000 Bitcoin. 
Next headline, crypto's first large-scale bank run. According to data from CoinGecko, Iron Titanium Token, or Titan, crashed from $60 to just a sliver above $0 in less than 24 hours on Wednesday. Titan is linked to the Iron Finance Project, which mints so-called stablecoins by locking in a combination of 25% Titan and 75% USDC. Coindesk reported that, quote, when new iron stablecoins are minted, the demand for Titan increases, driving up its price. Conversely, when the price of Titan falls dramatically, as was the case on Wednesday evening, the peg becomes unstable. In a post-mortem blog post, Iron Finance described the event as, quote, the world's first large-scale crypto bank run. As Titan began free-falling from $60, so did the pegged value of iron, falling to under 70 cents as a bank run was initiated on Titan, creating, as Fred Shibesta, founder of finder.com.au and an iron finance investor, told Coindesk, quote, a crypto vortex of money. Iron Finance explains this, explained this vortex as a, quote, negative feedback loop and the worst thing that could happen to the protocol, where panic selling led to more Titan creation, which drove Titan prices down, which caused more panic. For context, at one point, Iron Finance had $2 billion in value locked into the network. That number has dropped to $238 million as of press time. Titan and Iron Finance were available on Polygon and Binance Smart Chain. Mark Cuban, billionaire investor and avid DeFi user, recently admitted to being a liquidity provider on QuickSwap, an automated market maker native to Polygon, for the DAI slash Titan trading pair in a blog post on DeFi, which I recommended in the Daily Newsletter earlier this week. In a response to a tweet referencing the Titan crash as, quote, a rug pull, Cuban replied that he, quote, got hit like everyone else. Later on, in an email to Bloomberg, he called for regulation in the industry, quote, to define what a stablecoin is and what collateralization is acceptable. Preston Byrne, partner at Anderson Kill, tweeted back at him, Mark Cuban, this stuff is already regulated. That coin is more likely than not an unregistered security. You should have known it and you bought it anyway. Don't call for regulation just because your crypto investment team doesn't know what they're doing. This one is on you. Speaking of regulation, next we have a U.S. regulatory roundup. On Tuesday, Congresswoman Maxine Waters announced a new working group for House Democrats focused on crypto regulation. The group's goal is to, quote, work together on legislation and policy solutions on such matters as crypto regulation, the use of blockchain and distributed ledger technology, and the possible development of a U.S. central bank digital currency. On Wednesday, Waters' team released the group's roster, which will feature blockchain caucus and fintech's fintech task force leadership members. Bill Foster, a member of the working group and a blockchain programmer, told the block, quote, the United States is playing catch up to the rest of the world when it comes to digital currency. And if we're going to protect the US dollar status as the world's reserve currency, we need to make the development of secure and privacy preserving digital currency a priority. Also this week, the SEC delayed its Van Eck Bitcoin ETF decision, indicating it would like additional feedback. In the filing, the SEC is specifically looking for public comments on the susceptibility of an ETF to market manipulation along with whether the regulatory landscape has changed significantly since 2016, when Bitcoin ETFs first gained popular traction. Next headline. Can and should a DAO go to court? Welcome to the metaverse. A recent proposal on the governance form for Curve, a DeFi project for stablecoin trading, calls for enforcing its intellectual property rights in court. HydroSam, the author of the proposal, believes that Curve's DAO should protect its IP on behalf of its stakeholders, just as centralized exchanges would protect IP on behalf of a shareholder. He writes, quote, centralized exchanges protect their IP on behalf of their shareholders, and there is no reason why Curve, just by virtue of its DAO organization, should not protect itself for the benefit of vote escrowed CRV token holders. Written on Wednesday, the proposal takes aim at Saddle Finance, a competing automated market maker which, as, of the, as the proposal notes, has been accused of wholesale copying of Curve code. For example, back in January, Curve told Crypto Briefing that a quant stamp audit found Saddle Finance's implementation of its stable swap function to be, quote, exactly the same algorithm seen in Curve's codebase. The proposal argues that Curve's governance form should, quote, 
Review any proposals from law firms, make them public, and put them out to a DAO vote. Any proposed settlement should also be subject to a DAO vote. At the moment, 70% of members of the governance forum agree with the proposal. Time for fun bits. A 13-year-old dev created a protocol managing $1 million. Meet Gajesh Naik, a teenager and founder of Polygosh, a DeFi protocol housed on Polygon managing around $1 million in funds. According to Decrypt, Naik started coding at just eight years old and has learned five coding languages already, including Solidity, Ethereum's smart contract language. Arjun Kalsi, the vice president of Polygon, describes the project as, quote, a clone of Goose Finance, with a few minor modifications borrowed from SushiSwap. Kalsi praised Nike as, quote, the kind of guy who can build the next Facebook or the next WhatsApp. That being said, this is still a DeFi project built by a 13-year-old that DeFi watches Chris Black warrants allows a single administrator to exert control over the entire network. All right, thanks for tuning in. To learn more about GNT and Polygon, be sure to check out the links in the show notes. Heads up, everyone. The Unchained newsletter has switched from a weekly news recap to a daily blog in order to keep up the crazy pace of crypto news. Each morning, you'll get four to five quick headlines, a crypto meme or two, and a few recommended reads. Head to unchainedpodcast.com and the sign up for the email newsletter is right on the homepage. You can also find the link in my Twitter bio. Unconfirmed is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Mark Murdoch, and Daniel Ness. Thanks for listening.